All right, guys, so here we have kind of a trickier problem where we have water entering into this hose at a velocity of 0.2 meters per second, a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, and a pressure of one atmosphere. And it enters into that hose, and then it finally hits a power washer. And then that power washer is going to spit out that that water, that liquid water, at a faster velocity of 20 meters per second and at an elevation of 5 meters above where that power washer is. We're also told that this power washer does have a rate of heat transfer for, that's leaving this power washer, and that's 10% of the electrical power input. So you see this power outlet here, so obviously this is a power consumption device, and 10% of whatever that power is is going to be the heat transfer leaving this power washer. Now, we're told that the cost of electricity is $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour, and we're tasked to find the cost of power required in cents per liter of water delivered. So in other words, for every liter of water that this power washer spits out, we're going to have to find the cost of that per liter. So as always, I like to start with the schematic here. So we have a schematic of the power washer, and I simplified it down a little bit because the length of this hose doesn't really matter for the sake of this problem. So we just have the pressure, the temperature, and the uh, velocity and elevation on either side. And as you can see, we have an equal pressure and an equal temperature on both sides of this power washer. And then we have our heat transfer leaving in a function of the power. And by the way, there's also like, this is a power input device. So we do have some sort of power coming into here as well. Um, and then we have, I'm just representing the cost using C, so the cost, like the rate of the cost is 8 cents per kilowatt hour, and then we also have the total cost that we're looking for, which is going to be in cents per liter. So I'm going to begin by using the energy balance equation, and the reason I'm going to be doing that is just because I'm seeing that I have all these parameters on both sides, so there's some information that I should be able to gain out of this, and in particular I'm talking about the power. So we'll have that the heat, or sorry, that the uh, energy balance equation equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times, and I'll actually have a big bracket here as well, times H1 minus H2, plus V1 squared minus V2 squared, and this is for velocity. I'll actually add these arrowheads on top of the velocity to indicate we're working with velocity, divided by 2, and also the potential energy, which is the gravity times the change in elevation, Z1 minus Z2. Now there's quite a bit going on here, so I'm just going to break this equation down one step at a time. So as you can see, because we have T1 and T2 and P1 and P2 both equal to each other, that means that inherently H1 is going to be E equal to H2, right? So that being said, we have no change in enthalpy, and so H1 equals H2 or, or zero. Um, and we can replace this here, this heat transfer, with 0.1 W. So we'll have that 0 equals 0 0.1 W minus W, the power, plus the velocity squared kinetic energy divided by 2. And we're going to add the kinetic energy once again, or potential energy, I'm sorry, once again. And multiply by the mass flow rate. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term or this term right here in specific, and I'm going to move it over to the side of the equation. And so if you do, you'll actually have that 0 0.9 times the power equals the squares of the velocities, or the kinetic energy, divided by 2. And of course, times the mass flow rate, forgot to add that in, times the mass flow rate, plus the gravity times Z1 minus Z2. Now, if you just divide both sides by 0 0.9, you should be able to isolate for the power. I'm just going to add into this equation here. So I'll have dividing the mass flow rate by 0 0.9 allows you to eliminate it off of that power variable. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of get rid of this part right here just because I'm kind of tired of writing it, to be honest. So we'll have that the power equals the mass flow rate divided by 0 0.9, or just the mass actually, times the velocities. So at V1, we had 0 0.2 minus 20 from the exit. Square both of those terms. Divide by 2. Your gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared times 0 minus 5 meters. And now if you just simplify this expression, you'll have that power equals m over 0 0.9 times I got negative 249.03. And finally, we can get rid of that 
0 0.9 by dividing um, this number here. And if you do, you'll have that um, the power equals negative 276.7 times m. So let's backtrack a little bit and look at our units just so that we can kind of get, get a better idea of where we want to go next, okay? So if we're looking for a unit of cents per liter, and we're given a rate of cents per kilowatt hour, cents per kilowatt hour, um, we're going to have to figure out how, how do you get cents per liter from cents per kilowatt hour. Well, you need a unit of kilowatt hours on the top to cancel out kilowatt hours on the bottom, and you need liters underneath to achieve your liters on the bottom, right? So that means that our unit of power here has to somehow equal kilowatt hours per liter. So now I'll just divide both sides here by the volume. So we'll have the work per unit volume, and then I'll just divide the mass by the volume, because in doing so, now you can see that I've developed the density, because density equals mass divided by volume, right? So we'll have that the power per unit volume, power per unit volume equals negative 276.7, times the density. So now what I'll do is I'm going to find that density so I can finally calculate my work per unit volume. And if you turn to table A19, you can actually see that you have your water here at several temperatures. We'll look between 273 and 300 because we're actually at 20 degrees Celsius throughout this uh, pressure washer, power washer, sorry, which is equal to 293 Kelvin. So if you interpolate at 293 Kelvin between these two densities right over here, you'll see that the density at T equals 20 degrees Celsius equals 997.45, and the unit here is in kilograms per cubic meter. So now let's start plugging in some numbers and assigning some units. So we have that the power per unit volume equals negative 276.7, and what are the units for that? So where do we pull that 276 from? Well, we pulled it right over here from dividing by 0 0.9, which is a dimensionless coefficient. But we pulled that 249.03 from this setup right over here, which if you evaluate that out, it's just the kinetic energy, which is just going to be meter squared per second squared, or the potential energy side, of course, without the mass flow rate distributed to it, which would also be in meters squared per second squared. So sorry to get confusing here, but Essentially, the unit here is meter squared per second squared. So now we're going to multiply that by the density, which was, again, 997.45, and it's mass divided by volume, so kilograms per cubic meter. And now when I evaluate this, I have that the power divided by the unit of volume, or I should really have been saying the work, not the power, equals negative 275 994, so 275,994.415, and the unit here is, well, what do we have as a unit here? So if we have a square meter per square second and then a kilogram per cubic meter, you can actually group some components here. So I'm going to group the meter squared and the kilogram, and finally the square second. And when you do, you'll produce that you have a joule divided by a cubic meter. Um, again, just remember that a joule equals a newton meter. And what's a newton? It's mass times acceleration. And we're, mul we're multiplying that by a meter, so you can just square that meter, right? So you have a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So I just pulled that out, and we have a joule, and we're, we have a joule per cubic meter. So now we're working with the unit of work per unit volume is negative 275, 994.415 joules per cubic meter. However, we were actually looking for liters at the end of the day in this problem, right? So I'm going to convert this into liters. So we have negative 275, 994 joules. Actually, let's do it this way. We'll have a numerator and denominator here of joules per cubic meter. And in one cubic meter, so we'll cancel out the cubic meters like this and we have 1000 liters right and when you do this out you'll actually end up with negative 276 joules per liter so recall i was saying that we need this unit here of kilowatt hour per liter so we have the liter now now the next thing that we need to actually to get is that kilo right there so once again we'll have another conversion factor here so we have negative 276 joules per liter 
and we're just going to convert by saying that well, there's 1,000 joules per one kilojoule. And now if you cancel these units out, you're going to have negative 0 0.276 kilojoules per liter. And last but not least, now we need to get that watt hour in there because we have the kilo and we have the liters, but now we need to just convert this into watt hours, which is energy rather than work or power. And so to do that, we'll have is that the work per unit volume equals negative 0 0.276 kilojoules per liter. And we're going to multiply this by one hour per 3600 seconds. And so now you can pull out a kilowatt, right? Because you have a kilojoule grouped with a second in the denominator. And remember that a kilowatt equals a kilojoule per second, right? So now we have the kilowatt. And then we have an hour. So we have a kilowatt times one hour. So if you multiply this out, you'll have that the work per unit volume equals, and this is kind of a stretchy number here, 0 0.0000. 767 kilowatt hours per liter. All right, so now that we have achieved the unit of kilowatt hour per liter, now we just have to multiply it by the cost per kilowatt, and we'll be able to finally get our cost per liter. So we'll have 0 0.0000767 kilowatt hours per liter. And multiply that now by the cost, which again is 8 cents per kilowatt hour. And now you can cancel out your kilowatt hours, and you're left with cents per liter. And if you plug it into your calculator, you'll have that the cost equals 0 0.0006133 cents per liter. So basically what this number here means is that for every liter of water that gets dispensed by this power washer, um, the user here has to pay 0 0.0006133 cents per liter. Now we're told that the cost of water, the cost of water is actually 0 0.05 cents per liter. So not 5 cents per liter, but 0 0.05. So basically 5% uh, of a penny. So really the cost of water is much greater than the cost of running this power washer. So we'll call that um, cost of the power washer. It's really not costing you much more to use this power washer than not to use it. It's a really efficient device, and the cost of running it is really negligible.